Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Ashley, the amateur expert, coming to you live today on this Talk Tuesday. I'll be interviewing my friend, um, Richard, who is in video production. So I'm excited for you guys to hear his story. If you've never watched the show before, the idea is for me to interview people. I talk to them about their idea of success. Um, along their journey, I talk to them about their career path as well as the tips and motivators that they use along the way. So as soon as Rich gets in the room, there he is, we'll get uh, started. There he is. Hello. Hey, Rich. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So right. if you can, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what you do currently for work. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Turrentine. I'm a cinematographer slash serial entrepreneur here in Los Angeles. Um, that's my nine to five. That's my uh, Shoot, seven days a week, it, you know, doesn't stop. So that's my life. <laughs> awesome. And so what did you want to be when you were um, growing up? <clears throat> like as a kid? Mm-hmm. Man, uh, that's, a, that's a really funny question because it's, it's the complete opposite of what I'm doing now. Um, like growing up, you know, I grew up in a small little cul-de-sac, you know, pretty, pretty urban uh, setting. And all we ever Were you did was, in L.A.? You know, no, this is back home in D.C. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, all we ever did was play sports or, like, uh, you know, rap or whatever. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, so growing up, I, I, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to play football and, 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 like, rap with my peers. I mean, that's all we ever knew growing up that was cool and that was exciting. You know, I wasn't really exposed to too much more that would have, mm. you know, uh, swayed me to do anything else so that was really it I mean I thought that was cool and uh, something that would make me a lot of money as an adult um, so it was always you know either playing sports or being some type of rapper or something and so you mentioned making a lot of money what was your idea of success when you were chasing that dream or thinking that that's what you wanted to do was it a monetary um, a monetary um, basis yeah, I mean, we didn't know any better. So, I mean, well, I didn't know any better. So that's literally, that was the driving force to me, you know, becoming, I don't know, a football star or like a rap star. Um, yeah, we were young, just out there, you know, in the streets and playing and stuff. So, yeah, that was it. <clears throat> Making a lot of money, which, I mean, isn't a bad dream or motivating. <laughs> um, so yeah. how did how did you... Um, transition from wanting to be um, an entertainer or a rapper um, to becoming a cinematographer? Wow. So high school, I was introduced to entrepreneurship. And even before that, I had no idea, no types of understanding or concept of what entrepreneurship was. But I took a course called Entrepreneurship. And my teacher, uh, her name was Miss Joyner. I'll never forget her to this day. But um it was a cool course because, you know, she essentially broke it down to us. And she was like, you know, if, you, if you're passionate about something, you know, you should go into business for it because, you know, you'll be your own boss and you can you have control of everything. You know, and that was like, OK, so when I got introduced to that, I then, you know, I didn't know at that time, I still didn't know what I wanted to go in business for. But I knew I loved entrepreneurship and I knew I wanted to, like, step, set my own schedule and do my own thing. So uh, fast forward to college, I got into, I don't know, I just had an interest with, with writing s stories and okay. taking photos and stuff like that. So, you know, my peers, I was doing stuff on campus, like little small stuff, and my peers were telling me, hey, Rich, you're really good at this. Like, you should consider, you know, getting into the film department at Howard. And it's like, really? So that's kind of when everything kind of came together. That's where entrepreneurship my passion for entrepreneurship was married with film production and, you know, all that stuff. And that's kind of how it all got started. And from that on, like I was, uh, I was a sophomore at the time and I was shooting senior thesis projects 
for the upperclassmen and like traveling to New York and shooting <laughs> like hood videos in the neighborhood. And then, mm -hmm. um, then I met my mentor, Edward. He's a big photographer back home in DC. And uh, he took me under his wing and, you know, I was shooting weddings and bar mitzvahs. And then from that, you know, I was doing a lot on campus. I was uh, part of the homecoming committee. You know, I was shooting all the promotional stuff for all that and just everything on campus, you know, um, that was, and that's kind of how it all got started. And I started to build my portfolio and start to, you know, build a reputation. And, you know, from there on, it's just, the rest is history, really. <clears throat> and so um, what is your idea of success now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, early on, uh, it was just w with film production and stuff. It was just about, you know, building a portfolio, work on has to be uh, something that's moving, something that's uh, mm. going to be timeless, something that's going to inform, you know, the black community and just the world and, and uh, the world as a, as a whole. So uh, I'm very strategic on like what I want to uh, be involved with when it comes to film production stuff and mm -hmm. you know my name and my legacy attached to it um so that's so putting out projects like that that's success for me and another thing would be to you know because i eventually want to be a dad and i want to be a father and uh well same thing but i want to have a family so i want to be able to support yeah. my family i never really saw that growing up so i want to be able to you know um you know, have have a nice little sum of money, just you know, just so I can support my family and do things and and travel the world and stuff like that. So that's that's all success for me, and just being at peace. You know, I want to be able to do my work and my art, and just be peace at peace and be happy. You know, that's so. That's really and, what it is. Um, and so when I met you, um out in LA you tell you told me that you had a pretty interesting story about how you um got to LA um mm -hmm. for those who I think and I, I think what what resonated with me was that you had this fire this passion this desire and um you chased it and so mm -hmm. um if you could if you don't mind sharing just sort of not all of the details or I mean if you want to but just sort of like your journey <laughs> of leaving college and then how you um got to LA oh, you put me and on the spot. Found, your, found your footing in LA okay <laughs> so um LA was rough when I first moved here uh I came out here and I had a job but it wasn't what I thought it would be and it got terminated I got terminated so I was just left out to dry essentially um ended up being homeless ended up uh you know, living on people, on my friends and, you know, couches and stuff like that. So it was rough. Like I was living on my car, showering at the gym um, <clears throat> early in the morning, uh, waking up and, you know, applying to jobs. It was rough. Like I was homeless for a good, you know, year and a half or so. Wow. And then, um, but that time I was still like filming and working on projects, but I wasn't, it wasn't, like you know, yeah, I was freelancing. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it got to a point where I'm like, yo, should I go back home or should I just stay here? But, and at that time still, like a lot of my peers that came out here around the same time I came out here, they were going back home because they just couldn't stand it. They, they just couldn't do it. So I don't know. Like I just, uh, I just had a lot of faith and I just really sat back and looked at like how I would want the rest of my life to be. And if LA was to cater to that, then I would stay. If not, then I would leave. But so I had a plan and I, uh, I bought some property. Well, I, I'm sorry. I saved up for a property that I saw that I was like, okay, this is going to make me some passive income. This is going to kind of dig me out the hole and, you know, I guess put some type of foundation under my feet aside from like the projects that I was working on. Mm -hmm. you know, so I found this property and I got in contact with the broker and uh, I told him straight up, I said, Hey man, I don't have all the money for it but i love the uh, i love the property i think it's truly uh i think it's beautiful i think it's a, a filmmaker's paradise you know i have the goal in mind to i want to rent this out to other filmmakers and have them like shoot their projects you know on it and you know you know i'll give you i'll pay in installments until it's paid off so he agreed and that's what i did and you know now 
you know, actually this year is probably the the year that I've, you know, made the most money ever in my life just off of, you know, having that property. And then I have another one as well, but um, just allowing that to be my foundation so that I can do other things out here, like really helped out. And, you know, again, I'm still actively filming and, you know, being, being a cinematographer, but it wasn't as how busy as, you know, owning a space and having that passive income just flowing, right. you know, so. I attribute that to, you know, me getting some type of foundation out here. And I've worked with some pretty cool A-list celebrities and people who have the the crazy idea that, you know, since you worked on that project that you're rich and that you're established, yeah. no, like LA is a constant grind. Like you work with a celebrity, cool, whatever. They're like, they only paying you for the day rate. You know, you're not getting, resi you're not getting residuals or royalties from that, that project that you worked on. So, right. you know, it's about, you know, establish yourself and just, you know, keep being consistent at it, you know, so. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Um, Cause I definitely yeah. think and know that that's an inspiring story. Um, yeah. Um, so if you can, please um, mm -hmm. share with us um, uh, something that you learned or something that you're still in the process of learning that you wish you knew when you first started. In LA? Um, in LA or um, uh, starting your entrepreneurial ventures. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna say entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, one thing that I wish I learned early and that someone would have told me was that you know you're gonna fail, like you're not gonna have everything mm -hmm. figured out. So you can't be discouraged that you know you're gonna take some losses or whatever. Like that's just a part of the process, and you know. I tell everyone, because people ask me this all the time, like how am I able to, you know, adjust and do things. It's, you know, you have to be relentless. <laughs> you have to know that, you know, your idea or whatever you're working on is going to succeed. And that's going to be your driving force to, to really continue to, you know, go further and, and just do the best that you can, you know. So um, I tell everyone, like, if you're starting a new business or you're doing something that you've never done before, you're going to fail. Okay. You're going to fail and, you, and you're and you going to lose a lot of money and you and like it's that's just part of the process. So you can't be discouraged by that and you can't quit. Like those are all testing. They're testing roadblocks to see if to see if you're really serious about what you're trying to do. Right. You know, um, right now I'm building an app. Uh, this thing has ex like exhausted me and it's been the most challenging thing right. I've ever done in my life. But I've had this idea for, you know, a couple of years and I'm like, I will not be defeated by, you know, if this happens or that happens, like, nah, like this is something that God has planted in, into me to, to, to build and to do, you know, for a, a greater, greater cause. So I would say failure, you know, a lot of people go into it thinking they're over, I'm going to get rich or like, you know, this is going to be it. Like, you know, nah, that's not how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Be able to know that, be prepared to fail and then also have like a not a backup plan but be able to be con uh, have contingency plans uh, exactly. and like you said stay consistent um, you have to. and so piggybacking off of that what are some tips and motivators you used um when you did hit those hard times uh well i'm a big family person so i i would check in with my mom my sister uh family and just to you know uh, put things in perspective um, and they keep me grounded um, those conversations and just uh, sometimes getting away from the mess of what you're building mm -hmm. as far as like you know if you're building a business whatever getting away from it for a little bit and then coming back to it like because I feel like if you're in it 24 7 you would drive yourself crazy and it's just not healthy for you so um, yeah, like and doing doing things that you're happy that you're not that doesn't require you to think about stuff so much. Um, yeah, like all of those things like really helped me into into you know getting back on pace to to I guess fulfill what I'm trying to do. So so yeah, That's there's great. so many different things I pull from music, like going out, like it's just a lot of different things. That's really good. Um... So where do you see yourself in the next five years? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, well, <laughs> you know, uh, 
my app will be super successful. Um, I will have a I will have HQ for my production company, and um, you know I always say like I'm gonna have this big super big warehouse, and on the west wing we're gonna have production stuff, and on the east wing we're gonna have you know tech film tech stuff, and I'm gonna literally go back and forth. That's gonna be my daily routine every day. So the next mm-hmm. five years I'm gonna have like this super cool. A uh, creative space where you know on one side I'm I'm producing and creating movies and all other types of digital content and then I'm also going to be in the mix with film tech and you know um, innovating and pushing the film culture forward when it comes to film tech and things like that because I'm very interested in that as well like that's that's also my passion so and it started with the app that I'm working on like film technology that would okay. Yeah, so, like, when it, if it comes to, like, a streaming service or, like, any type of gear that we use to, uh, you know, produce the content that we make, you know, I want to be involved in building that stuff because I feel like a lot of us in the black community, especially, we're not involved in that. We, You know, everyone's mm-hmm. concerned about creating content, which is great, but none of us are really looking into creating the material and the, and the tools that we use to you know, create this stuff. And I want to be a part of that, you know. So that's where I see myself literally waking up about, I get up at 4.45 every day, uh, get up at the same time, and then going to my office and, and seeing what I could do to, to push the uh, culture forward. That's amazing. You know, being my family and stuff like that too, traveling and, you know. But, yeah, that's where I see myself. So we have a question. Where can they find your work? Uh, you can go on my Instagram. I can send you my portfolio. So one sheet. So, yeah. I will. Um, when I, when I repost this, I will have, um, his information tagged as well. Um, yeah. Follow me on Instagram too. I'll follow back. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Um, what else? What else? What else should we talk about? Um, whatever. I think. You, so you mentioned having an app coming out. Do you want to talk about mm-hmm. the um, the um, it's not a competition, but what you're getting ready to how you're getting ready to present it, right? Yeah. So we're uh, me and my partner Jeremy. He's uh, he's a partner of mine on the project. We got into this Google Summit um, in Silicon right. Valley that they have every year, and it's essentially like a huge tech summit where they invite a lot of the up and coming startups to just pretty much be under the same roof and just network and stuff like that. So we got into that. Um, We've been waiting for like months to hear back from them. So when we finally got the word, like we jumped on everything was like, you know, this is what we're doing. So we'll be up there in February, uh, you know, rubbing elbows with venture capitalists and, you know, all types of other people. So I'm excited. Um, This is a huge milestone and um the project because again like i've invested so much time and over two years i've been working on this project for two years on the low um and just funding it as well like uh we're gonna be releasing on ios android and uh web so i'm excited about that and um yeah i mean again guys skies is the limit like i've been working on this project for two years like just you know and throughout those two years I've been hit with so many road bumps and still to this day, like it's always something that's popping up. So, you know, just don't give up. And if it's something you truly believe in, like, just go for it. You know, Uh, I had this mentality was like, I have nothing to lose. Like I've already been super low where I've been homeless in my car, showering at the gym. So nothing can ever like bring me down to that level anymore. Like, and I just, I have that killer mentality, you know, where I just want to get shit done and, and really fulfill you know, my purpose in life and, you know, just keep having that drive. So, so we'll be there in February. I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to get the reception. And right now I'm wearing a shirt right now. This is the title of it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. That's the name of the summit. Oh no, that's the name of your, uh, your, your app. The app. Yeah. Yeah. That's so exciting. Um, and so I, you would, I think you posted something about the um, your property, and I am claiming that I will be there um, to film, uh, to film, to do some promotional work for yeah. um, Affirmed Armor, which is a brand I'm wearing currently. 
Oh, mm-hmm. so repping ourselves yeah. trying to do big things um yeah definitely. so yeah i'm i'm excited for everything that you have coming up and i'm excited to be able to part with partner with you god willing in mm-hmm. a few months um so if you could please share with me something that um i don't know so i call myself the amateur expert and i claim to know a little bit about a lot and so um what can i say that rich taught me Oh, about our conversation today? No, any just... fact, random tidbit. Oh, any random, okay, got you. Um, Man, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm into uh, motorsports. Like, I love uh, Formula One. That's like my escape from film and everything. Like, I love fast cars, and uh, yeah, that's that's what really gets me going. That's what makes me happy. A lot of people don't know that, but like, I literally watch Formula One uh, racing every Sunday. It comes on, and my favorite race car driver is Lewis, Ham- Lewis Hamilton. Black guy, but I'm big right? into that. Oh, French. Black, black French. guy, yeah, he's a black guy. The only black okay. guy in Formula One. And what, excuse my, uh, uh, I won't say ignorance, but ignorance. What's the difference between like NASCAR and Formula One? Or is there <laughs> so NAS- Yeah, so NASCAR, you, the circuit is just a circle, an oval. But Formula okay. One is more of an, uh, like there's turns and, you know, it's a lot more to it. Um, it's, it's essentially like a fighter jet driving on the ground. Like, that's how fast the cars go. And it's a lot of technology and, you know, innovation that, that's put into those cars. So, yeah, I'm I'm really into that heavily. Do you plan on participating in it or, like, owning a vehicle <laughs> that is that goes that fast or just something that no. you like to watch? No, I think I'm going to just go to a race one year and just to say that I did it. But, um yeah, man, it's it's really like my escape, and it's just I don't know. It's making me so exciting, so excited, and I think it's just more so like the sound of the cars and the technology, mm-hmm. and the fact that Lewis Hamilton is the only black driver. Like right. that's that's super relatable to me. So yeah, I think so. Nice, good to know. Thank you for mm-hmm. t- teaching me that, and thank you for being on the <laughs> show. <laughs> for sure. Uh, any other questions luck. or anything? I don't think so. I mean, so, okay, so you moved with a job out of college Mm -hmm. to L.A. Um, Mm -hmm. Would you suggest that if some, like, would you suggest someone move cross country or move, you know, make a big leap if they didn't have a job? Or do you think that they should secure something before they go? Oh, you should. Like to follow their passion or, you know what I mean? Yeah, you should definitely secure something before you move to L.A. L.A. is 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 just <laughs> it's a very tough city to really get yourself established. So I think having that foundation, like the basics, if you have the basics covered, you'll be fine because you'll fall into like what you really came out here to do. Like mm-hmm. if you have a job and you have an apartment, you'll be fine because you'll have a place to, you know, set back and, and then go and go and reset and go out and to do what you really want to do. Right. You know, so. Yeah, definitely. Like, don't come out here just thinking that you could get on, you know, if you're already known and famous on the right. East Coast, then sure. But if, you, if you're nobody trying to get on, like, no, you should come out here and really, like, set the base. You have the bases covered before do any, doing anything else. You know, I thought I had it covered, you know, but it, that turned out not to be the case. And I right. really felt it for a long time. Sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, so. yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I know a lot of people will, you know, take that leap of faith or they will, you know, they will move and become a server um, until they can yeah. find their acting gig or, you know, something along those lines. But, yeah, I do sure. agree that um, that you should make the proper steps um, or take the proper steps to even if, like you said, if it's not necessarily in your field, but you should definitely um, prepare yourself as best you can before you make the plunge. Hundred percent. And then the job that I had that I got fired from, like I was, uh, like digging through trash um, on film sets. And once oh. that got terminated, yeah, yeah. Once that once that got terminated, I was like, what else am I about to do? So I was applying, but nothing was coming through, you know. So, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's you got to have that foundation. Yep. For sure. Well, Rich, thank you again. Um, uh, can you announce or announce? Can you um, say where people can find you? Uh, what's your Instagram name? Um, do you have a mm-hmm. website? Where? How can people support you? 
Uh, Instagram. I, I mean, I mostly use Instagram, but it's Turn Time Studios. Um, can they like tap tap the icon up top to go to the page, or do I have to just? I'll just type uh -huh. it here. Yeah, and then my website. You can just go to the link in my uh, bio, and it'll take you right to my uh, website where I have my um, my film portfolio stuff, things that I've worked on, and you know, hit me up. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Thank you again, and um, best of luck to you. And I, we'll be talking soon. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Right. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And if you know anyone else that wants to be on, send them my way. Got you. We'll do. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. You too. Thank Bye. You.